Hey, I'm Melanie Kingett from The Absolute Recap, and today's video will recap part one of my predicted answers for the 2023 AP Biology free response questions. Quick disclaimer, these are just my interpretations of the answers. I don't have any insider scoop or preview of the official scoring guides, but I've seen enough questions and scored enough responses to have a good hunch. Just know your answers might have been different and could have still earned points. My first reaction? Their bark was worse than their bite. There were some wordy prompts and an uncommon graph, but if you skipped right to the questions, you should have found a few low-hanging fruit points that didn't require any background prompt information. I've linked these College Board released FRQs in the description below so you can follow along. Let's zoom out. Quick task verb breakdown. Describe, explain, and justify were each used six times this year, which continues their trend of being the most commonly asked for task verbs. Identify was runner up with four appearances and predict place third with three. Every other verb was only used once. Calculate, construct, determine, state, support, represent, and evaluate. Except for the graphing FRQ, you can expect each task verb to correlate to one earned FRQ point. Let's zoom in. Question one is interpreting and evaluating experimental results. The prompt previewed a signal transduction pathway and then studied the role of proteins in that pathway. Part A has two points. First, a charged phosphate group causes a conformational shape change in the protein which would cause the protein to become inactive. A signal can be amplified during signal transduction in a pathway because multiple proteins can be phosphorylated, which activates multiple intermediates and target molecules in a cascade. Part B had three task verbs for three points. There were two possible dependent variables, the activity of the APase enzyme or the amount of PHO1 mRNA. You can say either, but you don't need to state both for the point. The researchers used the negative control wild type strain to create the mutant strain in order to make sure that any change in the dependent variables is due to the mutation and resulting non-functional protein only, since everything else is held constant. The researchers used mutant strains in which a single component of the pathway was mutated in each strain so that they could isolate each protein in the pathway and their specific function. Part C had task verbs identify and calculate for two points. The wild type yeast strain in a low phosphate environment had the highest relative amount of PHO1 mRNA. Percentage change is calculated as final minus initial divided by initial times 100. So here you could say negative 97.1% or a 97% decrease in APase activity, since you were comparing high phosphate environment to low. Lastly, we have verbs predict and justify for two points in part D. PHO1 expression should increase in a mutated yeast strain with non-functional PHO85 protein. This is due to the fact that PHO4 can't be phosphorylated even in a high phosphate environment. So you end up in a pathway similar to the low phosphate environment. Add it all up and you could have earned nine points total for question one. Question two is interpreting and evaluating experimental results with graphing. The prompt introduced a trend between carbon dioxide and the number of chloroplasts in plants and extended the query to the number of mitochondria in five plant species. Once again, part A does not require prompt information. When it comes to cellular respiration, the inner mitochondrial membrane houses the proteins for the electron transport chain creates a barrier for the electrochemical gradient of hydrogen ions, and is a location for ATP formation. I don't think you'll need to say oxidative phosphorylation or chemiosmosis to earn a point, but I could be wrong. Part B starts with graphing for three points. One point for axis scaling. You should have species on the X, one to six, an average number of mitochondria per 100 micrometers squared of cell area with plus or minus two times standard error of the mean on the Y, ranging from zero to three. One point for a correctly plotted bar graph that distinguishes between normal and elevated CO2 levels with a key, and one point for correctly plotted error bars. Part B concludes with stating that all of the species showed statistically more mitochondria at elevated CO2 levels since none of the error bars overlapped. In part C, earn one point for saying that there is a direct and or positive relationship between higher CO2 levels and the average number of mitochondria. In part D, all of the offspring should have green leaves, 
because mitochondrial DNA is inherited through the egg or ovule of the plant and not the sperm or pollen. And you can have different phenotypes with the same genotype because organisms respond to their environment with differential gene expression. This is known as phenotypic plasticity. And done. That's nine points total for question two. To recap, two long FRQs down and four short FRQs to go. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. We'll see you next recap for part two, where I'll review FRQs three through six.